Yes, let's talk about hockey. The show that journeys through the history of the sport of ice hockey from its disputed origins to the game we see today. After adding seven new teams during the 90s, the NHL looked to close out their decade-long expansion efforts with two final clubs to start out the new millennium. One of these two new franchises landed in Ohio's capital city and took a name referencing the state's contribution to the Union Army during the American Civil War, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Columbus was not the NHL's first attempt at a franchise in Ohio, though. 24 years earlier, the struggling California Golden Seals relocated to Cleveland to become the Barons. This would be a short experiment, though, as the Barons continued to struggle over two years before the league merged them with the equally struggling Minnesota North Stars in 1978. It wouldn't be until June of 1997 that Ohio would get its second chance at NHL hockey when Columbus and three other cities were granted expansion franchises. The Blue Jackets' name would be selected after a Name the Team contest concluded a few months later, and by February of the next year, former Panthers coach Doug McLean was brought on as the team's GM, while Montreal assistant coach Dave King filled the role of head coach. During the expansion draft held in June of 2000, Columbus would grab a couple of former Hartford Whalers stars, Kevin Deneen and Jeff Sanderson, then afterwards sign highly sought-after goaltending free agent Ron Tugnut. Columbus's first game came on October 7, 2000 against the Chicago Blackhawks. Unfortunately, the game would end in a 5-3 loss. But five nights later, the Blue Jackets would register their club's first win by beating Calgary 3-2. Despite Jeff Sanderson's 30 goals and Espen Knutsen's 50-plus points, three winless streaks of six or more games throughout the year landed Columbus in last place in their division and 13th in their conference. In their second year, the Blue Jackets dropped to second from last in the league, even though newly acquired forward Ray Whitney set a new franchise mark with 61 points. Then, to make matters worse, in March of 2002, a deflected shot by Espen Knudsen struck a young fan in the head, resulting in her death from the injury 48 hours later. Due to this incident, the NHL would install large nylon mesh nets behind the goals in all arenas to shield spectators from pucks going over the glass, while the Columbus team also wore small red hearts with the fans' initials on their helmets in memorial. Things were seeming to take a turn for the better for the Blue Jackets at the start of the 2002-2003 season, as they not only had received the first overall pick in the entry draft during the offseason, which they used to select London Knights winger Rick Nash, but after their first 14 games, they carried a 7-5-1-1 record. Sadly, they were not able to keep things up, with a five-game losing streak in December and a six-game losing streak in February keeping them at the bottom of their division once again. Over the next four seasons, despite bringing on veteran talent such as Adam Foote, Daryl Sador, and Sergei Fedorov, and Rick Nash's emerging skills earning him the Rocket Richard Award for his league-leading 41 goals in 2004, Columbus would still finish no higher than 11th in the Western Conference. In the 2008-2009 season, with Rick Nash's franchise record 79 points, rookie goalie Steve Mason's franchise record 10 shutouts, and the additions of winger Jason Williams and center Antoine Vermette, the Blue Jackets won a franchise-best 41 games to finish 7th in their conference for their first-ever playoff berth. Unfortunately, this would be a short playoff run. Columbus would be outscored 12-2 by the Red Wings in the first three games of their opening round series, before Detroit completed the sweep with a 6-5 win in Game 4. On a more positive note, though, goaltender Steve Mason became the first Columbus player to win Rookie of the Year honors when he was awarded the Calder Trophy following the playoffs. Over the next three years, the Blue Jackets relapsed back to the bottom of the Western Conference, finishing no higher than 13th. During this time, Columbus cycled through three coaches and saw the departure of Rick Nash in a trade to the Rangers. While the acquisition of forward Vinny Prospo would help the club out, the addition of Flyers All-Star Jeff Carter would not, as the Blue Jackets shuffled him off to the Kings after only 39 games in the 2011-2012 season. It would be during the 2012 entry draft that Columbus would make a deal that began a turnaround for the club, 
trading their second and fourth round draft picks to Philadelphia for goaltender Sergei Bobrovsky, who replaced Steve Mason as the starter. Though the 2012-2013 season would be shortened due to a lockout, Bobrovsky's 932 save percentage and 2.0 goals against average not only backstopped the Blue Jackets from last place in the league the previous season to within one point of a playoff spot, but also earned him the Vesna Trophy as the league's best goaltender. In the 2013-2014 season, the NHL underwent a realignment which moved both Columbus and Detroit to the Eastern Conference. This year, Bobrovsky would again be the backbone of the team, ranking in the league's top 10 for wins, save percentage, and shutouts, while centers Ryan Johansson and Brandon Dubinsky, as well as defenseman James Wisniewski, spearheaded the Blue Jackets' offense with 50 or more points each to lead the club to a franchise-best 43 wins for the year and their second-ever berth in the playoffs. Against Pittsburgh in the opening round, Columbus dropped the first game 4-3 after blowing a 3-1 lead in the second period. But in Game 2, it was the opposite story, as Pittsburgh blew their own 3-1 lead late in the game, resulting in overtime, before Matt Culvert scored to give the Blue Jackets their first playoff victory 1 minute and 10 seconds into the second overtime period. After losing Game 3, Columbus would manage another overtime comeback win in Game 4 thanks to goals by Dubinsky and Nick Foligno, but that would be all the Blue Jackets could manage in this series as the Penguins edged them out with 3-1 and 4-3 wins in games 5 and 6. In the 2014-2015 season, Columbus would lead the league in man games lost to injury with 502, having to play a good chunk of the year without star players like Bobrovsky and Dubinsky. Though the Blue Jackets were able to win 12 out of their last 13 games after their injured players returned, by then it was too late as they finished 9 points shy of making the playoffs. 2015-2016 would be another disappointing year. Despite recent acquisitions Scott Hartnell and Brandon Saad combining for 102 points, and former Tampa Bay coach John Tortorella taking over behind the bench in late October, Columbus dropped to second from last in the Eastern Conference. The Blue Jackets would start out the 2016-2017 season around the middle of the pack, before going on the second longest winning streak in NHL history with 16 consecutive wins from late November to early January to shoot up in the standings. Defensemen Zach Werneski and David Savard would also set franchise records of their own for most points by rookie and highest plus-minus total, respectively while Bobrovsky led the league in save percentage and goals against average in what would be another Vesna Trophy winning season. By the end of the year, the Blue Jackets would finish ranked third in the Eastern Conference with a franchise best record of 50-24-8 for another trip to the playoffs. Once again, Columbus would be matched against Pittsburgh in the opening round. However, unlike their last meeting, the Blue Jackets fell into a quick 3-0 series deficit. And though they were able to extend the series with a 5-4 win in Game 4, the Penguins were able to close out the series with a 5-2 victory in the next game. Though they have yet to achieve any real playoff success in their 17-year history, recent seasons have shown that the Blue Jackets are a club on the rise in the never-ending quest for the Cup.